Hey everybody, how is it going? Welcome back to my channel and happy Monday. And it actually is a happy Monday because the market is up big for once and the NASDAQ is up about three and a quarter percent. So in this video, I'm going to be going over the market averages to see what could be coming next. Are we going to be running into these resistance areas and rolling over or is the bottom finally in in the market? After that, I'm going to be going into the trades that I made for the day. But before I get into any of that, please remember, I am not a financial advisor. Uh, all of this all is just my opinion, so please make all of your own trading and investing decisions. Now, with that being said, I do have a Patreon, so if you'd like to join our small trading group, it is only $9.99 a month. The link is down there in the description. I do a pre-market watch list video in the Patreon uh, just about every single day before the trading day starts, just to let you know what I am watching and um, if I see anything else significant in the market. But if you'd also like to uh, support the channel by simply liking the smash button, I would appreciate that too. But let's get into these market averages. We can see the QQQs are just about to this 200 period simple moving average and the 21 period exponential moving average, which is that purple line. And you can see the last time the Qs ran into that 21 period exponential moving average, it was an average it could not get above. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens once it reaches that or if it even reaches that but um, in my opinion I think we're probably going to be end up we're going to end up probably breaking through it hopefully tomorrow um, if I had to guess what is going to happen and this is just a guess um, I'm thinking we're probably going to end up breaking through it and maybe doing a little bit of uh, consolidating maybe a little bit of pulling back um, probably pulling back down to this 200 period uh, ex a simple moving average and then hopefully we can print another nice green candle and that should confirm an uptrend now that might be a little bit of wishful thinking because there's a lot of people out there that think we still have a long ways to go on the downside for this market but if we do get a reversal i think we're probably going to end up breaking through those moving averages and it's going to make it look like we're going to uh you know probably be following through to the upside and then we're probably going to end up rolling over rather quickly so if this happens uh, unfortunately, we're going to be taking out a new low and there's going to be some more pain, at least in the short term for the market. But let me get these things out of here. But that's my take on the cues. That is what I am looking for. But it seems like uh, conventional technical analysis isn't working all that well. It's like uh, the people that are running this market, they know what some of us guys that are into technical analysis are looking for. And, you know, they kind of run it the other way at least for a couple of days i mean after printing this nice big green candle you almost always get immediate follow through to the upside and what did they do they ran it down for pretty much three days making it look like we were going to roll over immediately and then they had this big reversal on a friday once they printed that big reversal on friday i was so close to buying some call options at the end of the day on friday and at the last second, I thought different of it, and I should have. I should have uh, ended up buying those call options because we had a nice follow through do, follow follow through day today. But um, let's take a look at some of the other averages. Take a look at the spider, the S and P five hundred. See the S and P five hundred um, found support at this support area right around uh, four twenty eight or so, and we we're having some nice follow through today. The S and P five hundred is stronger than the Qs, so that is a good sign. And if you take a look at the diamonds, you can see the diamonds are also above the 200 period simple moving average. It is coming right into that 21 period exponential moving average. So it's going to be a very pivotal day tomorrow because it looks like they could all be running into that moving average. So it's going to be interesting to see if it can get above it. And if we take a look at the IWM, see the IWM is also making a nice reversal as well, but still has a long way to go to catch up to the other one. So hopefully um, we can get some more follow through to the upside in the IWM can get back up into this consolidation range here above 210. I think that would be very, very uh, good for the market. But uh, let's get into those trades. All right, well, getting into my trading activity for the day, uh, I made two trades and they were both day trades and actually they both worked out. But I've actually been jonesing to start doing some more uh, swing trading. So hopefully we can get some follow through to the upside in the overall market. And, uh, you know, the, just the market environment gets more favorable to holding on to stocks for more than a day or so, because right now all the swing trades are just getting chopped up and I make more money swing trading. So, and I also enjoy swing trading more. So hopefully we can get into that environment soon. But when you get into an environment where swing trades are not working, you have two choices. You can either try to grind it out 
or uh, you can step aside and uh, just wait for the market conditions to get more favorable for swing trading. I choose to do the latter. It is a lot less stressful, but that's why I have this day trading strategy so I can uh, continue to get uh, to make money, even though we get in those market environments where, uh, you know, the swing trades and longer term stuff isn't working as well. But getting into the first trade, it was in FGI. And as you can see, FGI has only been traded for just a few days. So if you get a gap up in one of these stocks, you know, I really like these ones because usually there isn't a whole heck of a lot of overhead resistance because there hasn't been enough people in this market yet. So when you get a gap up in one of these type of stocks, sometimes you can get a really big run in them. Uh, but let's get into the trade here. I traded this one on the minute chart. Let me back it up here. And let me size the chart up a little bit better for us. Now, FGI had a big gap up. Uh, it looked like it was going to start pulling back, but then it just found support immediately and it started putting pressure on this upper resistance area. So um, I put my buy order in at $5.42. It was executed at $5.46. So not the best execution in the world. Uh, started screaming up. I put in my order to sell at $5.98 and then the stock got halted. I really hate when the stock gets halted because uh, you'd be surprised how many times um, once it opens up again it just rolls over somehow and then you know you just kind of sit there waiting in the stock you know for whatever reason for the thing to open back up and I got lucky on FGI because it opened back up shot back shot up over six dollars a share and uh, you know hit my order at 598 and then uh, went a little bit higher and then it started to roll over and if we look at the rest of the trading day we can see it ended below my uh, sell price so this was a pretty decent trade for me um, i'm actually surprised there wasn't more follow through to the upside in this stock because it was strong especially early on and the market had a big up day but for whatever reason uh, i just kind of rolled over a little bit and went sideways for the rest of the day but uh, let's get into the next one all right, well, that second trade that I made was in TKLF, and this one has also only been traded for a few days or so, but this chart pattern looks a heck of a lot uglier than FGI does. Um, and even though this is a relatively tiny day as far as the chart goes, there was actually a ton of movement today and a lot of opportunity for day trading this one. Um, let's go to the minute chart, and I'll show you how this one panned out. This one's probably going to be a little bit more difficult to situate it because it's such a goofy-looking chart. Let me see here. And this one I actually deviated from my system. So I don't necessarily know if this is a good thing or a bad thing that the trade worked out. I don't want to be rewarded for, you know, not following the system. Uh, the system is there for a reason. It's to keep the odds in my favor. But for whatever reason, I just thought this trade was probably going to bounce or this stock was probably going to bounce once it got down here to about 345 because there was some uh, pretty decent support from the previous day right here. So I didn't even wait for it to round up. I just put my order in at $3.46 and it got executed and I sold it almost immediately at $3.60. So um, it was a pretty decent trade on a percentage basis, but you can see I left quite a bit on the table because this thing just kept going and going and going all day. But the fact that uh, I deviated away from my system, I don't know, it just made me a little nervous to be in it. I was kind of shooting from the hip when I took this trade, so... I took my gain and uh, I, I moved on, but we can see that this one just kept screaming. So you never know where the stock is going to go. More often than not, I find when they have one of these gaps up in the morning, they tend to like roll over after about a half an hour or an hour. But that was not the case with TKL up. This one ended up a lot higher from where I sold it. So, hey, it is what it is. You never know where they are going to end up. But those were the trades that I made today.